Good morning and Happy New Year. Welcome to Live in a Greenhouse on YouTube. If you're new here, this channel is about my journey to design, build, and then live in the first greenhouse enclosed tiny home in the United States. Being the end of the month, today is the January walk around. And this was a tough month. Our ferry was out of service that hampered a lot of my plans. Plus, I had to go to Seattle the morning after a big windstorm and sub-freezing temperatures. I got into line very early to be sure I was one of only about six vehicles that would get onto the beach landing barge. Adam saved the day to clear the debris from the ramp. I was away for a week that coincided with below freezing temperatures and there was a 24 hour power outage while I was gone. Since I don't have supplemental heat in the greenhouse, to protect my citrus trees, I have an electric seed starting mat and thick blankets around the lemon and calamondin trees that I hoped would protect them from a freeze. I have a battery backup in case of power outage to keep the heat running, but it does no good if I'm not here to switch the plugs from the main power to the backup. So if you enjoy this content, please like and subscribe so YouTube will show it to more viewers and come along today as I walk the outside and inside of the greenhouse to see how I rode out the storm. Coming home from Seattle, there was already a few inches of snow. Boy, do I love having cover for the car during the heavy rain and snow. It was either raining or too cold most of the month to rake leaves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here they still sit. Moved more dirt to this garden area. This corner drops about 18 inches, so I put a couple large rocks to terrace the slope. The cardboard pile got tidied up a bit, but not hauled away. Fortunately, the water to the trailer has been off for months, so there wasn't any water in the line. But it was difficult to open the lever, so add lubricating that to the to-do list. During the month, we had heavy rain and high winds that took down trees all over the island. Although my property is ringed with tall trees, I worked hard before, during, and after construction to take out any risky trees and protect the rest. I'm pleased that nothing larger than about an inch diameter came down on my property. It gave a valiant effort, but the freeze killed off the last of the Rose really? Campion. I run three dehumidifiers, two electric heaters, and the propane heater inside the trailer. Fortunately, I'd hooked up a fresh propane bottle before leaving the island and didn't experience any problems due to the power outage. The hydrangea doesn't look too good, but there are new leaves attesting it's still alive. Only a few small branches came down during the storm. Last summer I washed off a lot of bird poop, but never saw any birds actually sitting on the cabin. But they've returned to mess up my nice new paint. Move up on the to-do list to put up those spike things to prevent them standing on the trim. The rainwater tanks are full, and I'm pleased that there's no apparent damage from the freeze. Not as much debris in the downspout traps as I expected.
These bulbs were already more than an inch tall before the freeze, but are no worse the wear. I didn't get any protection on the key lime, so it may be a goner. The Sam Houston peach tree looks good, and the buds are swelling a bit. I plugged in the heating mats, put on the blankets before leaving the island. The foliage doesn't look too good, but I think they're both alive. The olive tree looks good. It's been too cold to work on the pool this month, but supposed to be in the 60s tomorrow, so I'm hoping to finally finish the patch tomorrow. The straight line four hose attachment was a casualty from the freeze. This is the first I've seen of this two and two configuration, so I'll give it a try. I'd thrown some sprouted grocery store potatoes in this corner that were doing well before the freeze. Not looking so good now. Some spinach, radish, and lettuce seeds left over from last summer seem to have made it through the cold okay. I'm surprised the flowers in these pots came through alive. The tender herbs and flowers didn't make it, but I'm pleasantly surprised at how much did survive. I've seen a rather fat mouse in the greenhouse that I have out some peanut butter baited traps, but it looks like he mowed down this parsley in the meantime. The transplanted houseplants are 50-50. The staghorn fern is still alive, but I don't think the spider plant will make it. The final piece of living room furniture arrived, this table between the chairs. Unfortunately, I can't get the second drawer to attach to the glides, even though the first attached with no problem. This is so frustrating. With the cold and rain outside, I've really enjoyed cocooning here to sew, watch movies, or work on this year's garden plan. I first noticed this effect from the sunrise on the polycarb panels last New Year's Day and enjoyed it again this New Year's Day. I love standing here in the morning with my coffee and just looking at the light. Between the high exchange rate fans and heated floors, there's still no sign of mold in the bathroom or laundry room. but the orchid and pothos like it here. While the bedroom isn't as warm as the living room, it does get better light this time of year. And this night blooming Sirius is happy here until spring. And 
there you have it. Even though it's not much warmer in the greenhouse than outside, the visual space the greenhouse adds to the living space does the trick to not experience cabin fever in only 400 square feet of living space. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share with your friends. And come back next time to see if spring comes early inside the greenhouse.